Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 12 in the how to program in C Sharp course. This video is going to be about enums. So I excuse that it's been such a while since the last video, but as you can see, I've been really busy. And also I got sick right after my vacation, so uh, if my voice sounds kind of weird, uh, that might be why. But uh, without uh, further ado, I quickly want to mention that uh, the Brackish Forum is the place to be if you uh, have any questions or the code is not working or something. And uh, also for you, uh, the, uh, those of you who are using uh, Unity, uh, I've just released a new version of UPA Toolkit on the store that introduces uh, uh, blend modes and a bunch of new uh, layer functionality. So that's super cool. I might make a video about that too. Uh, we'll see. Cool. So let's open up Xamarin Studio and get started. So enums uh, are fairly easy to understand once you know why they are useful. So let me just line up a case here where enums would be great. So the formal definition of an enum is basically um, a uh, uh, a type that we create uh, consisting of a bunch of constants that we associate with a name. Uh, so an example of an enum, uh, if I just make one up here, uh, is if we type in enum, uh, that's uh, just like we type in class or anything else, that's uh, a keyword. And uh, then we give it a name. And uh, this a name could be, uh, for example, uh, direction. This is a very common example. And uh, then we open and close some square brackets and we close it up with a semicolon. Uh, not square brackets, curly brackets. And then in here we could do uh, north, west, east, and south. And they don't need to be in any particular order. Uh, and uh, this way down here, if we wanted to access this, we could uh, make a new direction. So we could say uh, direction and call this uh, maybe deer or whatever you want to call this. And we could then set it equal to, to direction dot and then it will show the different options that we've given, given it. So it's basically a uh, way to uh, define a bunch of types that are very easily readable uh, instead of just uh, using an integer to represent uh, different things or a string. So uh, a, a good example of when you would use this is, uh, again, we have this idea of a base class called animal. And then we derive from that uh, into a dog class. So this dog class is derived from animal. And so it will inherit all of these uh, members. And uh, the dog class adds on a public void that will print out uh, everything we know about the dog to our console. Uh, so that includes currently the name, age and happiness. And uh, if we should add onto this, let's say we wanted to add a dog breed. So I found this useful uh, list of all dark breeds, uh, so I wouldn't uh, run out. And uh, that's one of the uh, weirder searches I've made today. And uh, uh, basically, if we wanted to define uh, a, a breed for our dark, we could make this a uh, public integer called breed. And uh, then uh, let's create a constructor also here. So again, all of this with inheritance and constructors that's covered in an earlier video. So let's just quickly make a public dark constructor here. Um, like this. And this will take in a name. So we're going to do a string name and uh, integer for the age and a float for the happiness. And then down here, uh, we'll simply set uh, name equal to the name that we've passed in. Uh, do the same with the age and the happiness. Okay, cool. So now we have this constructor set up. And uh, if we wanted to pass in a breed here, uh, we could simply go uh, int breed and uh, set the breed down here. Okay. 
And then when we wanted to print this out, uh, we of course don't want to print a number, but then we could uh, make a switch statement, for example, that would check for uh, the index of the breed. Um, so we could do a switch for the breed. And uh, then we could define a bunch of different uh, cases. So uh, we could uh, define that if this was uh, equal to a zero, we would uh, print out that the breed was a um, bulldog. And, uh, and you can just keep on doing that and we'll, we would probably be forced to do a, a default one also because we, uh, there are a bunch of breeds uh, in the world of dogs and uh, we would probably not be able to ride out all of them here. So you can see that that's a very cumbersome uh, way and also it's hard to remember uh, which index is associated with what so you would have to constantly check when using this. So a better way to do this would maybe to uh, turn this into a, a string. And this could of course be done. Um, so you would just change this to string. And now we would simply write out the, uh, whoops, write out the breed as we've done with anything else. So simply write out the breed here to the console. And then down here, when we make a, a new dog, we'll simply say uh, dog and we'll call this one uh, Hulk and we'll make it a new dog uh, called Hulk with a uh, an age of 6 and a happiness of 0 0.7 and uh, we could then make the breed a, um, what do we want to do this time, a boxer like this uh, but this way when we print out Hulk we will notice that it actually looks fine. We can see that it says the breed is a boxer. But let's imagine that we have a bit of a bigger program and uh, we actually want to do something uh, with the knowledge of the breed. We don't want to just print it out. We actually want to have some logic that depends on what breed it is. Again, we could go in and make a switch statement, but this way uh, we don't. Uh, we have to actually support all of the different types of breeds. And that's n maybe not something uh, we want. I mean, there are so many here and uh, we don't want to sit, in, uh, sit there and type in all of them. And so uh, our code could be easily broken. So what we do instead is we simply limit our possibilities and uh, this is ex ex especially great if you're working multiple people because it makes the code very readable and, and easy um, to uh, not fuck up, so to say. And uh, we basically do this by up here creating an enum and uh, this will be our uh, breed. And we do a capital B here because we're defining a type. And uh, we uh, simply use the same syntax here to then type in a bulldog, a boxer. We could do a chihuahua. And uh, you could just keep going here, Briad. And uh, you can do as many as you want. Uh, by the way, some people like to type it out like this. Uh, and that's completely valid. Even some people do it like this. Uh, and again, that's just fine. Uh, but when we are not talking about uh, a lot of, of, of types um, of values, uh, I, I like to just do it on one, one line there. So uh, now we have all of our different options and you will notice that uh, spaces uh, cannot be used here. Um, but basically now we have defined this, we simply need to turn our type here instead of string into breed. And this way, down here, uh, it will simply print out the breed. So when we pass in here uh, what breed we want, we simply do capital breed dot, whoops, and then you can select whatever one you want. So if we want this to be a chihuahua called Hulk, <laughs> uh, we simply uh, do that and uh, we save this and hit play. And it's going to say that we cannot implicitly convert, oh, that's because we need to change the type there also. We try this again. You can see that it prints out that our breed is of type Chihuahua. And you can see that when uh, printing out uh, an enum, uh, the uh, conversion to a string actually happens automatically. If you wanted to uh, be specific in telling uh, whoever is uh, reading this that it is actually not a string, you can of course call the toString 
uh, method uh, that's a bit more explicit, but uh, really uh, unnecessary. Cool, so that's basically enumerations for you. Uh, one last thing, you can define values for each of these. And when I say values, I mean uh, integer values. Um, but uh, that's not really needed in most cases. So I think we'll just uh, stay away from that. Uh, but that's uh, enums, uh, a, a basic uh, introduction to enums and, and how they can be used. So that's basically all for this video. I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.